and Satan's talking to Eve, and Satan says, uh, I know, you know, God said you'll surely die, but he won't really surely die. And after another series of questions and, and, and doubt being placed by the serpent, Adam and Eve partake of the fruit. And immediately, they're cut off. The same thing is true with us. Every act of disobedience, something dies in us. Now, let me explain death. Death in biblical terms is separation from God. So I can, now you all can handle straight talk, right? I can be in church carrying a Bible, dressed up to look my Sunday best, and still be dead. I don't have to be laying in a casket in church to be dead. Because every act of disobedience takes us one step away from God. But we've got to reclaim the law of love. Because though we now know more word than we've ever known, we can quote scripture in different languages and we know more about what the Hebrew and the Greek says and the nuances of all the words in the Bible. We now know more Bible than we've ever known and we do less of the Bible. What good is it to know the Bible and not do what it says? And when we violate the law of love, hear me today. You can ask, believe, confess, demonstrate, and endure the faith process all you want, and you'll get nothing. You can cry out to God in your prayer closet. You can weep and howl. You can sleep on a stack of Bibles, and nothing will happen. And we, see, I believe people ought to get results. I believe Jesus died so that we could get some results in life, that he could turn things around for our lives. He could take our situations, take what we're going through, turn them around for his glory. I, want, I wouldn't want to serve a God that just says, struggle along, do it the best you can, but sure enough, when you die, you're going to get the best of everything. Yeah, but I got to do some living before I get to dying. God wants to do something in our lives, but he can only do for us at the point that we obey him. And so, the reason why our prayers go unanswered, it's not because God can't answer them. It's because when we disobey, we're separated from God. And in that separated state, we can never get his best. In that separated state, that's why do you think Jesus came to die? He came to die so we could get back into the family. And so we talked last week about how the, the, the first thing we have to get right, the first act of obedience that ignites new life in us is when we make the decision to follow Jesus. Now, notice Romans 10, 9 and 10. Paul says that if you confess the Lord Jesus. Now, if there is a Lord then there have to be people who serve the Lord. Another word for Lord is master. And if there is a master, 
there must be okay, must be servants, praise the Lord. The Greek word is slave. Now I say that because, because in this world that we live in, it prizes and acclaims independence, self-reliance, and have it your way. But when we make Jesus Lord, we are willingly saying, I know I can have it my way. Most of the time, I really want it to be my way, but I choose because I want to please you, God, to lay my agenda on the side and take up your agenda. And when we make that act of obedience, we really love God. May not feel warm and fuzzy. May not even shed a tear when I think about him. But I know I love him because I have demonstrated that I will do what he tells me to do. So what does he tell us to do? He gives us scriptural commands. That's in the Bible. You know, when I was growing up, we were always taught God is mysterious. He's a mysterious God. He can't be mysterious if he wrote it down. How how can he be mysterious? He told you in here how to get right with him. How, how, How can he be mysterious? He told you the prayers he'll answer. How can he be mysterious? He gave us all the answers in here. He gives us scriptural command, and all he says to us is, just do what I say. Jesus, in um, John 15, 14, says, you are my friend if you do what I command you. Let's go see that, because let's let's go see that. Because, you know, we like that song, I am a friend of God, right? I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. You call me friend. Right? You know how he calls you friend? Because you do what he says to do. Amen. I'm not his friend just because I say I'm his friend. Amen. John 15, 14. Did I get it right? You are my friends if you Now, that was a great place for y'all to help me out. That was a great place for y'all to help me out, but y'all left me hanging. Only Pastor Quinn helped me out there. So we're going to rewind. All right? So let me see. I hope I got it right. John 15, 14. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. But God, you know I love you. (laughs) But you show me that you love me. When you do what I told you to do. People lied, gave their lives so that this book would be translated in a language we would understand. People literally were killed because they dared to get this this Bible out of the original languages into a language that people could understand. Now that we have a Bible that we can understand, why is it that we still don't do it? 